Baking was once a hobby for your granny and an easy way to treat the family. But simple homemade cakes are no longer the only way that we enjoy baked goods. The baking world has rapidly shot away from its classic stereotypes, much like a DeLorean speeding through time at 88 miles per hour. But what exactly has changed to make baking cakes the phenomenon that it is today? The alchemy of flour, eggs, butter and sugar has turned baking businesses into a recipe for success. Cake-based startups have tripled since the rise of the Great British Bake Off in 2010. As the programme's audience has grown steadily over the years, an interest in home baking has marked a renaissance. Masses of people who had never held a whisk are now convinced that baking is the most fulfilling way to prosper in business. One man who has done very well for himself and apparently has enough dough to afford an entourage fit for an A-lister is Paul Hollywood. The legendary Silver Fox has sat as a judge in the Bake Off since its first season. And with this year's final generating a record-breaking number of viewers, perhaps this is why Channel 4 handed over £75 million for Paul Hollywood in a tent. Will he rise to the occasion? It's the yeast he can do. I think it's, uh, it's a science which appeals to my nature. I love the fact that it's the reaction of, for instance, baking powder or bicarb or yeast with a flour and water to create something that is totally unique, totally different. It's one of the rarest, it's one of the only um, forms of cooking or baking that you create primary ingredients like flour, uh, yeast and salt to create something completely different. If you're cooking a fish, at the end of that dish it's still a fish. If you're cooking bread or a cake, it comes from those primary, primary uh, ingredients like flour and come up with something completely different. That's why I love it. It's so versatile. And actually, anybody can bake, but what's the difference between a baker and a great baker is consistency, doing the same thing every day. The so-called bake-off effect has got people of all ages involved and is the inspiration behind the Edinburgh University Baking Society's afternoon tea. They teamed up with the Royal Voluntary Service to give lonely old folks a sweet treat. But why have young people taken to the hobby like strawberry jam to buttercream? Definitely bake off. I mean, yeah, it has bake to be off. Bake I think off. so. Yeah. I, I mean, it's got such a range of people on it, and quite a lot of younger people. And I think I think that's what's really inspired a lot of people to bake that are younger. Baking for a generation that know their Swiss rolls, scones and sandwiches down to a tea is a daunting task. But as the face of baking changes, will the students soon become the master? It appears that way as Lorna Gregory teaches her three-year-old Elliot the rules of the kitchen. Lorna's Free From Cakes is a homegrown business which started in her family kitchen in 2015. It began after she discovered that her second-born son would grow up unable to eat soya and dairy. It was a real struggle at, at first to get him diagnosed and um, to actually get people to believe that there was anything wrong. So that was really quite a difficult time, the first six months of his life we, we basically spent in hospitals and doctor surgeries and things. So uh, I just feel that experience was quite negative and now throughout through this, doing this with my cakes, I've turned it into a positive. It just it makes me really happy that I'm able to make cakes for people that have maybe never even been able to eat cake before. Um, and just, it, I know that it brings them so much joy as well. I think my customers trust me mainly because I'm also an allergy mum. Um, I'm loving this day to day and I, I get it. <laughs> In short, I get the, the whole thing, the dealing with cross-contamination, dealing with uh, symptoms, uh, just uh, the whole sort of social aspect of it as well. Um, and the, you know, a lot of allergy children are kind of left out from things, um, birthday parties and things like that. They have to take their own food and they can't eat the cake that's there. Another mum eager to open a baking business was Michelle Phillips. She was willing to risk it all during the recession to create Mimi's Bakehouse, a chain of cafes across the city of Edinburgh. I had such confidence that things of what I wanted to do at the time that I decided to sell my house and basically moved into rented accommodation and put everything into, into this 
Um, yeah, it was quite a, a risk, and everyone thought I was mad, which I probably was. <laughs> but it's worked out, uh, and I think when you've got you've got a dream and you've got a passion about something, and you really think you know you can see exactly where it's going to go. Um, and for the family, I just thought it was a great thing for them to set them up all in business as well, and it's a, it's worked out because they have put 100% into it, knowing that we've put 100% into it. And, it's been a great platform. I did my family tree, and when I went back, I, know, I, I found out that from the 17th century there was actually bakers that were, were baking in these days, which I thought was uh, amazing and fascinating because all through my my family life, there's been somebody baking from aunties, uncles, grandparents, or whatever. So I've always just had this passion for baking. It's just always been there. And now my daughter Gemma has taken over the baking, so she runs the bakery now. Um, and she's she's the next generation. We promote that uh, by having our pictures of our family tree on the wall. And um, I think people like to see that we're a family business. They like to see us around. Um, they get to know us. Um, and I think it's, it's a nice message to have, you know, your family around, because you don't see it very often now. There's so many big guys out there that are, you know, it's just a, a business on the street, but there's nothing, there's no story attached to it. We want to be who we are and have our strong identity, and that's what I think we have. There's nothing to it. From the shores of Leaf to the shores of Saltcoats, the idea of keeping true to your identity and roots is a value that the two-time world champion Scotch pie makers hold strong. And if there is one man who can explain the gratitude of carrying on a family tradition, the candy man can. My mother and father really wanted um, that McAllister tradition of having a craft baker uh, within the three towns of Salkots, um, Adros and, and Stevenson. Um, alive and it was myself and my brother who were going to carry on that tradition so I think that tugged at my heartstrings and I felt that was more important to me to follow in my father and my brother's footsteps and become you know a craft baker I felt that I wanted to keep the recipe for success very simple I wanted to follow the traditions and the systems that they had built up. Since Stephen's grandparents opened the candy bar in 1929, the recipes for their cakes, pastries, pies and breads have been passed down each generation of the McAllister family. Stephen hopes one day he can pass the baton to his son and daughter. After all, the business is run for the locals, by the locals. We like to um, put ourselves out there uh, by employing um, members of, of the family. Um, we've got mothers and, and daughters and mothers and sons and cousins and brothers. Um, so we really are what you would say a traditional family bakers. It's been hard work, uh, long hours, early starts, late finishes, but it's the most satisfying job. Managing Mrs Jones Cakes, a baking school in her home kitchen in the south side of Glasgow, this teacher is no stranger to getting the job done. Sheila Jones is a master in her own right in the art of confectionery and baking. She is a founding member of the Glasgow Baking Club, the chairwoman of the Glasgow branch of the British Sugar Craft Guild and a member of the Scottish Association of Master Bakers, a true jack of all trades. But surprisingly, baking hasn't always been Sheila's main focus. Her regimented way of working in the kitchen has to have come from somewhere, and where else is a better training ground than that of the British Army? So I applied to join the Armed Forces and was commissioned into Queen Alexandra's Royal Army Nursing Corps. And actually I only applied for two years, but 25 years later I still found myself there because every day I learned something new, every day I was challenged uh, in some way in my career, and every day somebody made me laugh and I think that's a really good combination uh, when you're happy at work. But actually after doing it for 25 years it was time for a change. I just decided I'm going to hang up my boots. 
And one day we were having lunch and a friend of mine said, having tucked into one of my cakes, I don't know why you don't do this as a business. And the whole table went silent and that was it. It was like a eureka moment. Swapping battalions for baking has been the icing on the cake for Sheila. Her booming brand has become known all over the world as students flock to her school to soak in her knowledge, much like lemon drizzling into a sponge. She hopes the Bake Off effect continues to bring pupils to her kitchen. We have students come from uh, overseas, Argentina, Spain, Denmark. Uh, we've had, had a student from Australia. I have to say they're not all here for just coming to work with Mrs Jones. They're here for because they're normally on holiday and they can fit in a course uh, round about it. And I'm also very lucky that the kitchen now attracts the world's best cake artists. And these people come, again, from America, Australia, the Far East, Canada, um, and they come to me uh, uh, to teach here. Um, and I'm very proud of that fact. Very definitely the Great British Bake Off has had an effect because people are, are keen to uh, learn. And actually, they think they can create a three-tier cake in three or four hours because that's usually what the showstopper challenge is in the, on the final event. But the problem with that is that's not really how it's done for a true, you know, a real wedding. There's stages to making a cake, and I think some people are surprised by that. And it's all ages. They just have not learned to bake and now really want to do that. It has taken Sheila years to learn how to create masterpieces like these, but in Sheila's family, the gift of baking didn't sift through to every generation. However, Mrs Jones does attribute the woman in her life for igniting her passion in the baking. My granny had been at the tail end of service, the Downton Abbey bit, but she certainly was no cook and uh, she was the type of person you would go to her house uh, for lunch and you would have, oh, can I think about it? custard that was so thick and lumpy that um, it kind of stopped as it poured over the sponge and it, you, you, you just ate it because it was your granny that had made it. But it was my mum that did all the cooking so really that's where I've, I've got it from and kept that going even when I was in the military um, and away from home because everybody just liked a homemade cake. Ah, uh, cake. It's no wonder that the British public contribute billions to this industry each year with so many accomplished bakers carrying on the traditional family methods and many more creating brand new recipes, there is one thing that has stayed the same. It's one of the few trades that brings joy both to the maker and to the buyer. It's quite a sense of achievement if you sort of come up with a new recipe and, and then sort of put it together and it, you know, it tastes nice and looks nice and people enjoy it. People look at baking and that kind of is, is a comfort. It's like a comfort in hard times and uncertain times and I think people tend to turn to that. It really is the most satisfying job. And there is nothing more warming, uh, I think, and when I say warming, I mean welcoming uh, than a nice piece of homemade cake of any description.